Oh no, shock horror. The Bitcoin is dead. Or is it? Well, not precisely yet, but it will be very, very soon. And why do I say this? Well, there's two reasons. The first is that all the numerical codes that are designed to be easily used by computers, and we're talking about things like PGP, SHA, and um, various other secretive codes, and triple dares, and practically any computer algorithm you can think of that involves encoding, always seems to use high value primes because of the difficulty of factoring high value primes. Now there's a big problem with these type of codes and that is that the machine that's doing the decrypting has a very easy job of knowing whether it's got it right. All it needs to do is compare two numbers. Compare this to actually breaking a cipher where the machine would have to have a rough idea what the content of the message was first and then go looking for key words like the and 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 when and words that you could be pretty sure would be in any message and then when it found those it would know that it's broken the code. Well guess what with these numerical codes it doesn't have to do all that hard work. So it kind of makes it easy. It's almost as if the NSA and the CIA had designed codes for ease of machine breaking. Oh, sorry, they did. Yeah, most of these codes, surprise, surprise, were designed by the CIA, an ex-CIA gentleman, or the NSA. And um, it's hardly surprising if perhaps they might know how to break them. And the codes that are behind Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies are very similar. Very similar. So they're easily broken so long as you've got a powerful enough machine and thereby is the rub at the moment because people say, oh, with a one kilobyte hash then it's going to take, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years to break it and by that time who cares? Well, not so. Try 21 days. That's what was achieved by people with a group of Sony Playstations networked together. 21 days. Now, okay, you say, well, we'll move up to two kilobyte hashes. That would take the known lifetime of the universe to crack using the computer technology we've got at the moment. But I've got news for you. We're still not safe because of a company called D-Wave and Quantum Computers, which the NSA has just bought. Now let's have a quick look. Well here we are on D-Wave's website and I would really um, recommend that you go and have a look at yourself because there's a lot on here, there's a lot more than I'm going to look at. But anyway let's have a quick look at the D-Wave 2. And why the D-Wave 2? Well because the NSA has just bought one. Yes the NSA now has a D-Wave because it wants to use quantum computing. Now why does it? The leaked internal NSA document, this is a Snowden leak, said the application of quantum technologies to encryption algorithms threatens to dramatically impact the US government's ability to both protect its communications and eavesdrop on the communications of foreign governments. It's fast. It's particularly good at this one problem, factoring prime numbers. Mm. And these are the basis of nearly all the codes that are around today. So it's a real quantum computer. It's the world's first commercial quantum computer. The D-Wave 1 wasn't commercial. They never sold it. It was kind of a test bed. So here's what it looks like. You've got a control console. You've got a big refrigerator. And inside that fridge, it's cooled to a temperature that's 150 times colder than interstellar space. And this is to reduce the amount of noise. And this is an actual D-Wave processor. 
so it's shielded against magnetic effects it's in a high vacuum really really exotic technology we're talking here and it's low power Fifteen and a half kilowatts compared to, oh, who knows, five, six thousand kilowatts on a normal supercomputer. And this is what the processor looks like. You've got this copper enclosure, and the processor's communicated with down all these lines that come through this braided cable here, and it's absolutely amazing. So, before we have an orgasm over all this technology, what's it really good for? Well, it promises to be able to decrypt today's most confidential communications without knowing the keys within seconds. We're not talking about the lifetime of the known universe, we're talking seconds. Now, obviously this is what the NSA has got, um, but what the NSA have got today, typically, in about four or five years time, is being used by computer gamers. Might sound ridiculous, but that is absolute fact. The graphics cards that are being used at the moment, especially those with CUDA, C-U-D-A technology, outperform most of the supercomputers that the NSA was using just five or six years ago. So this is why I'm saying that very soon anybody in their front room will have the technology to break the blockchain, to make fraudulent entries on the blockchain and as soon as that happens, even once, Bitcoin and all of its relatives are toast. So even if you don't agree with those who say that Bitcoin will never take off because it doesn't actually represent a real store of value, it's just proof of work, then you just have to take this into account. This is why I'm selling all my Bitcoins at the moment. I do have a few. Um, I know it's not the ideal time to sell because the value has dropped just recently. It may very well bounce higher again, who knows. But the one thing I do know is that sooner or later, compared to gold or silver, the value of Bitcoin and any other cryptocurrency is going to be in the toilet. Well, I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have, please share and subscribe. Thank you very much. Oh, hi, Arduino-tronic, for gold news, finances, opinions, art, and just loads of interesting crap, all right?